So you're looking to get into overlanding, but you want to do it for the cheap. Take it from someone who's done eh, a little bit of overlanding here and there. What vehicles I recommend if you want to get into overlanding for the Jeep. My name is Jeffrey, AKA Omega Greed, and we're going to jump right into the video. These are the top five vehicles that I personally have looked at when I was looking at starting off a new cheap overland build. So let me preface this. My criteria for these vehicles are vehicles that are going to be good for overlanding if you're especially if you're first starting off most people when you're first starting off you're either going to be going to some type of campsite that's going to be kind of like already set up for you that you can go or you could be going to different areas where you can get off and a little bit into the wilderness but i wouldn't necessarily say this is something that off like you're for your first time you're going to go super far into the bush going to be completely remote for weeks upon a time most people especially when you start off you'll be doing weekend trips three days maybe the most that you would be doing so that's kind of my main criteria so my main criteria are, are going to be something that can get you there on road because let's face it you are going to be spending most time on the road driving there something that's going to be uh, i would say reliable have space and most of all that's fairly cheap so those are my main criterias now let's jump into this list. Let me say once again, these vehicles are vehicles that I have actually personally looked at and thought about doing a build myself on. The first vehicle that I would recommend would be the Jeep WK, not an XJ. If this was mostly just gonna be a complete off-road build, I would say the XJ. The XJ, I feel like, especially now, you can really build those things up and be a monster off-road. But like I said, a vehicle that's gonna be good getting you to the actual location that can carry stuff uh, you can be comfortable in and then you can still do the off-roading aspects But let's face it most overland builds. They're not rock crawlers They're just have to be capable enough to go down different trails that you can get to different campsites Especially if that's some gravel roads if that's some fire road depending on the location that you're at most areas are going to be still a bit more challenging for most vehicles, but Anything on this list, it should be able to handle it no problem at all. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you already know that I had a Jeep WK that was lifted. I loved it. It was matte black. That thing was great. The WKs were made from 2005 all the way to 2010. Made with a plethora of different engines. You can get the six cylinder, the 3.7 to the V8. Uh, they had many different engine options. The one main reason why I would say I would suggest getting the WK versus the XJ is because of the WKs right now, they're still fairly cheap. For a clean XJ, most people know what they have. They're not going to be, they're going to be in the same price range of a WK. You can get a WK, it's newer, has more technology in it. And if you get like a 2006 or seven, um, when it had like the little facelift, they're, I mean, you you are getting a lot for what you're paying for. Some of them have the four wheel drive that's the all time. Some of them you can shift into four wheel drive. The main thing is those things are comfortable on road and they are capable off road. You can do a lot of stuff if you wanna do snow camping or anything like that, you won't have any problems. I would suggest just either getting a small lift, doing some bigger tires, and then just straight out of the box, they're pretty good. Also, if you know me, I love Jeeps, but I can honestly, I wouldn't recommend getting a Wrangler if you're looking for something that's going to be cheap i would probably stick with the wk and an honorable mention is probably a jeep commander as well those those guys had the big v8 they're a little bit bigger as well um so that's another option but me personally i would choose the jeep wk the next thing on this list is the toyota sequoia now it's no secret toyotas they have a lot of reliability great brand name everyone knows all about them if you're looking to get one for the cheap i would get a older model sequoia you'll have plenty of room i would su i would suggest skipping the tacoma most people want the tacoma but if you're looking for something that's gonna have a lot of room that you could do like a cool build inside of you can do a whole camper build inside of a older uh, sequoia that way you don't have to worry about doing any type of bed rack or anything like that. You have everything enclosed all inside of itself. They have great reliability. If you get one that's older, that's clean, you are gonna be paying a little bit more, but they're not terrible, especially comparatively for something that is gonna be reliable that'll go you know, 200, over 200,000. And speaking of Toyotas, we have another Toyota on the list and people accuse me of being a Toyota hater and a Jeep fanboy, the Toyota FJ Cruiser. Now, if you are a subscriber on my channel, you probably would know. FJ Cruisers, I've been looking at these things a lot. 
Now these guys, their prices have been going up. You can get a fairly used one, still fairly cheap right now. This is 2023, actually no, 2024 pricing. I know a lot of people will suggest the Land Cruiser, at least in my opinion, the F8 Cruiser, I believe you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck and they're gonna be a little bit more cheaper than the Land Cruisers. Any nice Land Cruisers, they're going to be very expensive. And I will say the FJ Cruisers, they always looked very unique to me. They have three window wipers. And uh, if you want something that's gonna stand out in the crowd, I would definitely take another look at the FJ Cruisers. They really are a very unique uh, vehicle. The negative side is the back seats aren't the biggest. So you are losing some, uh, I guess, some space with that. But if you want something that's gonna be reliable for the most part, it can get you almost anywhere. The FJ Cruiser is a nice platform to build off of. If you wanna do a cheap rooftop tent on top, you could do that. You'll be able to hold it so you'll have your sleeping quarters or anything like that. Um, but honestly, if you're looking to just start off with, I would suggest skipping the rooftop tent, just getting yourself like a normal ground tent sleep with that with the fj cruiser uh, of course you can do that with any of these other vehicles but uh if you're looking for like that extra space if you're bringing like more than two people yeah just bring a, a ground tent now the fourth option on this list this is probably going to be probably one of the cheapest ones on this list i would suggest any suburban gmc yukon or escalade build that you can find right now these things are fairly cheap they are fairly cheap if you can find a, you know, decently used one, but they've been around for so long. They're fairly, fairly, I mean, these still are GM products. If you guys know me, uh, I have a gripe with GM products right now, especially from the early 2000s. My Corvette would just never work. I just really hope it would just work. You can find one that's in fairly decent shape, you will have plenty, and I say plenty of room inside of them. You can do a full on camper build inside of them. We've seen people turn the whole back, they take the back seats out. You can do a full on living quarters inside them if you really wanted to. Now, when it comes down to the ground clearance and going far, far off the beaten path, it's gonna be a little bit harder just because they are so big. But if you're looking for a true overland build, once again, you're gonna be using something that's gonna be able to go uh, long distances, very comfortably, you're gonna be able to camp inside of the vehicle, either at campsites or some other trails and stuff like, like that. It's gonna be off the beaten path. But as far as going super far, far out into the wilderness, that may be a little bit harder just depending on where you're going. And then the next item on this list is honestly, it's nothing crazy. I would say F-150. Now, this is the only truck that I would say that I personally have looked at myself. The earlier uh, F-150s when they had the facelift, especially nowadays, you can get them fairly cheaper. This was it just depending on the year and the generation, but I would say the one from like 2008 and up that you are gonna spend a pretty penny probably on these build, but if you want something that's gonna be uh, fairly reliable, just because they had a ton of these things on the road, there's a ton of them on the, the road. There's plenty of parts available if anything does break, uh, especially if you're handy, you can fix it yourself. It's just a, it's just a Ford. Um, you have all the capabilities, especially if you get the four x four to go off road or anything like that. Do a camper on the truck itself, similarly like how I have on my Ram Rebel, do a camper on it, you give, your, you give yourself of all the extra storage space of the truck bed itself plus you get the capability of the truck if you want to put a rooftop tent on you could or if you just want to just run the camper and sleep in the bed you could now everything on this list they're going to have pros they're going to have cons and i'm sure you guys are going to let me know in a very constructive criticism way down in the comment section how i'm wrong and how you are 100 right but the main thing is for you if you're looking to get into overlanding just get out there and just start or i always say start with what you have if you have your normal car go off to a normal campsite that you, most most campsites you can just drive there there's just like a normal path that you can just get there go there actually camp overnight see if you actually like it I feel like a lot of people want to get into overlanding, but then when they actually go and they do camping, they realize it isn't as fun as you really thought it was originally going to be. So I would suggest you to first and foremost, go out there and just start. But if you wanna see my first attempt at going overlanding inside of my Ram Rebel, check this video out right here. This is my first time going camping in the Ram Rebel, staying in it and uh, really living out of it for a couple of days. Check this video out, see you in the next one.